The WNBA, also known as the Women's National Basketball Association, was created in 1996 as a branch of the NBA. But even after 25 years of the creation of the league, most people look at it as the laughingstock of professional sports. Here is Clark, her three, off, Lloyd the offensive rebound, she missed the putback, so did Howard. Why is that? Welcome back to Triple Double, and in today's video, we'll be talking about why the WNBA is the worst sport in the entire world. Comment down below what you think about the WNBA, drop a like and subscribe to the channel, let's get right into it. So what's really wrong with the WNBA? Why is it that almost immediately following the end of the NBA playoffs, the sports world becomes dry and boring? Sure, there's baseball and tennis and golf, but hasn't the WNBA made a name for itself yet? In a sports world where everything seems to come to a complete standstill when summer arrives, besides the Olympics, one would think that another professional basketball league would be welcomed and garner much attention. So again, I ask, what's really wrong with the WNBA? Is it the W that just kills everybody? Surely in the land of the free, in the land of equality, women's sports are just as important as men's. It's almost amusing how people will give these ridiculous excuses to why the WNBA hasn't succeeded, all just to avoid controversy. But let us be real today, the WNBA is failing because it's boring. Let's not beat around the bush, women's basketball is basketball in its purest form, the way the game is supposed to be played. Okay, so why doesn't anyone like it? Well, ask yourself, would I rather watch Sue Bird take a great pass from one of her teammates and finish with a layup? Or watch Tracy McGrady grab the board, lead the fast break, and finish with a posterizing dunk on Sean Bradley. Don't get me wrong, I like women's basketball just fine and all, but ask me to watch it outside of the NCAA tournament, you gotta be kidding me. So when I hear the lovers and apologists start giving me excuses like everybody goes on vacation in the summer, so naturally ratings will be lower, I chuckle a little inside and try to keep an understanding face. Ultimately, the WNBA is going to have to find something or someone to market. Enter Candace Parker. Candace Parker wasn't the complete answer, but she definitely had a strong start. She's been the face of the league for a while. Now you need a rival player, team, or something that sparks controversy. The NBA succeeded because it was built off of rival matchups. We need some trash talking, a little in your face action to get the media's attention. I'm not saying we need another Pistons Pacers brawl, but a little bravado never hurt anyone. Believe it or not, as much as the NBA and NFL discourage trash talking and animosity among its players, that's a lot of what drives up ratings. It creates a storyline. Anybody who remembers any storylines in the WNBA, Feel free to leave them in the comments down below. The thing is, there isn't any. We have to stop acting like this is the perfect world and that the WNBA doesn't need to format itself after the NBA to gain public appeal. The smartest thing the WNBA could ever do is allow the NBA to help in whatever ways possible. The WNBA doesn't have many teams and half of its teams lose money. They benefit from revenue generated by the NBA's national television and sponsorship deals. They're basically funded by the NBA, and it's causing the NBA to lose money. An ESPN contract with the NBA is the primary source of revenue for the WNBA. The WNBA gets a very small fraction of that TV revenue. For instance, when the NBA signed a $2.6 billion deal, the WNBA only saw $25 million of that. In a rare and candid moment, James Dolan, who owns the WNBA's Liberty and NBA's Knicks, told HBO's Real Sports that he came close to handing the franchise back to the league in 2015. He said that it hasn't made money. Its prospects of making money at that time and even today are still slim. Dolan has still held onto the liberty and there seems to be little doubt of the NBA's continued support of the WNBA as a legacy investment in women's basketball. But there is a fundamental problem with the WNBA. It needs more fans, lots of them. Attendance fell to an average of 7,318 a game a few seasons ago, almost two decades after reaching its peak of 10,000 in 1998, the league's second season. The majority of sports consumers are male, and the WNBA was created to lure females into sports consumption. On paper, the idea made sense, right? 50% of people don't really watch sports and most are female. Why not try to acquire that market? The problem is, in reality, women consume so many other types of media that the WNBA simply does not compare to. Social media sites, YouTube, and even the Kardashians have higher ratings of engagement and support than the WNBA ever will. Adam Silver even revealed during this interview that they are frustrated that women are not showing up to the game. 
I, I, I'm particularly frustrated that we've been unable to get young women, girls, to attend those games. It's interesting, women's basketball is largely supported just in terms of demographics by older men, for whatever reason, who like fundamental basketball. And, and it's something I've talked a lot to the players about, and, and including Rebecca, when she was a player, she was active in the union and now on television. It's that we're not connecting with almost the same demographic that our players are. I'm always saying our players are roughly, let's say, you know, 21 to 34 in, in that age range. He also revealed that the WNBA is supported predominantly by older men. That's weird. There's a huge lack of entertainment value when you actually watch a game. Don't get me wrong, they're phenomenal players and are fundamentally very, very good. The problem is the biology of it. Women can't compare to men in terms of strength, acceleration, or vertical. Think about a player like Vince Carter. His vertical leaping ability and hang time in this play is absurd. Yet there are only three players in the WNBA to have ever dunked, and none of them could jump like Vince Carter ever will. When you watch an NBA game, there's always a chance to see a moment that captures our imaginations or even exceeds them. The WNBA suffers from a lack of athleticism compared to the NBA, and unless we make serious strides in genetic engineering, that gap will simply never be closed. One idea that Shaq brought up was to make the rims lower in the WNBA, make them 9 feet tall. But Candace Parker didn't take too out of that idea. Here's the clip. 10 years ago, the WNBA game was here. NBA game is here. Now it's here. I have a way to make it equal. Just listen to me now. You ready? All right. We've heard it. Yeah, we've, we've. So in beach volleyball, the women's net is maybe half an inch lower. You think if we just lower the rim so y'all can dunk like we dunk, that'll give y'all more oomph than you already have? No. I mean, cause listen, y'all are doing the, the step back, the pull back. Y'all doing everything we're doing, but I don't see a lot of people going up with two hands and, you know, back. Oh, it's down. coming. Opportunity is a So you don't think if we just is a, drop it to nine, ten nah, and a half? I'm, I, I guarantee Layla, she's in the dance, but my next child will be drop step Duncan, I promise. <laughs> and even if you triple the WNBA salary cap, it doesn't make the league more watchable. Most players have to play overseas during the offseason in Eastern Europe, and they earn up to triple their WNBA income, which begs the question, why even come back to play? Just play in Europe. The WNBA's inability to fully capitalize on its early successes has been acknowledged by one of its founders, Adam Silver, now the NBA commissioner. He said that the league had not progressed as far as it should have, and that he had not focused on it as much as possible. He said as much as we've done in lending the league our name, the people who have been in the sports business for a long time historically underestimated the marketing it takes to launch a new property. They need to market the league as the best women's basketball in the world with deeper talent than ever. WNBA players also feel like they're not getting the fair shot that they deserve. And with that being said, that wraps up today's video talking about why the WNBA is the worst sport. Comment down below your opinions, drop a like, and subscribe to Triple Double for more videos.